Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics, and we've reached the end of the week once again. So, of course, we got that last call for you. That's right, last call. We're discussing our picks for books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night, August 31st, or Sunday, August 30th, if you're DC. It's a pretty slow week this week, though, isn't it, Jack? It is. It is. You know, not every week is going to come out gangbusters, but there are some important releases this week. And like we've seen the trend happening over the last several weeks, a ton of late printings and some specific titles that you're definitely going to want to be uh, of note to. So it might be a smaller list of titles, but there are some great titles in here. And we're going to get into it right now with the first one. And we get that one from Marvel that people have been talking about. And we have a Mortal She-Hulk number one. Right. This one had some buzz as soon as it was announced. Uh, it had kind of those back issue speculators going back, trying to figure out when did She-Hulk become immortal. Um, so you're seeing a lot of that that back issue play and work. So there'll be a lot of interest, I think, in the in the new release. There'll also probably be some store exclusives. But you're not going to see um, a, a, the same kind of push, I think, for a mortal She-Hulk that you see for a mortal Hulk. This will probably be a nice one-off, one-shot. Um, I think it could be a nice at addition to your like a Mortal Hulk run. If you've been putting together an Immortal Hulk run, this is one of those nice additions, nice add-ons to it. So um, this is one I'll check out. This one I I'll take a look at. But, you know, again, the Empire stuff doesn't really pull me in. Right. You're talking about building runs. Also, if you're building collections, especially for those Alex Ross timeless variants, this is going to have one of those as well. Then from DC, we are getting that three Jokers. That's right. This is issue number three that has a bunch of great covers for it. It's got that great Jason Fabak cover art. But issue number three, they're soliciting as the final chapter of the most terrifying mystery. Yeah, so this isn't a book that we didn't necessarily sell anybody on, right? If you're, if you're on board for three Jokers, if you've been following the buzz for the last year, then certainly you've been paying attention. But it's definitely one we want to highlight coming up on FOC, especially with the kind of wonky DC FOC dates. Make sure you get those orders in. Make sure you're locked in. Um, you want to get that finale issue to three Jokers. And also an important thing of note is that those premium variants that we've seen throughout the first uh, couple of issues, um, they're going to come to a close here and result in a one in 450 uh, kind of uh, compilation premium variant. That is definitely going to be a book I think that we'll have the market buzzing around the release of issue number three. So that's something if you're interested in, you may want to talk to your LCS uh, owner kind of early because I don't think there's going to be a ton of those going around. Sticking with DC, we get Dark Knight's Death Metal Speed Metal number one. This actually takes place right after Dark Knight's Death Metal issue number three. And it also had some controversy going at one point, right? That's right. There was a lot of switch up with the Peach and Moco covers. Definitely made secondary market uh, headlines, had a lot of buzz, um, got moved from an open order cover to an incentive. Um, that kind of like last second switch up tends to uh, get the market's attention. But Hitting FOC now, this is definitely going to be a book to pay attention to, a big book to be on the lookout for. We've seen the 125 uh, pre-sales as high as $75 to $85. So that's, that's definitely one to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. So we sandwich DC Comics right in between Marvel books and we get Juggernaut number one hitting final and cutoff as well this week. Yeah, and this is one of those books that's interesting because part of me is on board for this because it's a uh, unique character that we can get a, a good perspective. And we've seen some of these series that have focused on some of these villains, anti-heroes, kind of outliers in the Marvel Universe have actually been some of the, the series that have taken off extremely well um but a lot of that has to do with writing by by heavyweights like donny cakes and this comes from marvel legend fabian nicisa but who you may be familiar with as one of the co-creators of deadpool the less controversial of the two deadpool creators but, he's like uh, ah that guy's talking enough for me i'll just yeah yeah exactly but but it, again he 
he's he's I've actually met him at conventions. He's a really nice guy, um, and he is integral to the original creation of Deadpool. So um, that it's kind of cool that they still do like uh, a lot of work with him uh, after all these years. A lot of like kind of less '80s '90s talents don't tend to get that current work. So it's cool to see him do do projects with Marvel. Um, but I don't expect Juggernaut to like penetrate the secondary market. There's a number of store variants. Um, certainly the, the aesthetic and look of Juggernaut lends itself to some of these more modern art styles. So I think some of the store exclusives will get attention, but this to me will be a flash in the pan release. But one we got to talk about because it's a big new Marvel number one. So we've talked about some Marvel and some DC books, but we're heading over to Boom right now with that Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number two. Yeah, now Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number one was a smash hit coming off the heels of the Ranger Slayer one shot. It really caught people off guard as kind of everyone was expecting one sort of Draken story when this was originally solicited. We certainly have gotten a completely different type of story, but there's a lot of anticipation going into Draken two. Um, there was a complete sellout of Draken number one. They went to a second print for that. Um, and now we're coming in with number two. And this is one to pay attention to because I think stores under ordered number one. And we certainly know about the typical cut in print run from issues number one to issues number two. So if you are on board with Draken, this is a mini series you're gonna be picking up, but maybe you're not a regular Power Ranger buyer. This is the perfect time to go ahead and hit up your LCS, make sure you pre-order. Make sure, make sure you get those orders in before FOC so you're locked in, especially if you want to take advantage of any of those incentives. Now, of course, I'd be remiss to tell you that one of the best ways you can do that is this Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right on simplemanscomics.com or the 616comics.com. We have our brand new exclusive for Draft New Dawn number two from the amazing cover artist, Hal Laren dropping right on our site, $24.99, 500 undressed copies. We've also got that amazing Steve Morris track in New Dawn number one exclusive still on the site. Be sure to grab both of those this Saturday, um, as well as you can pick up any of those incentive bundles that you want to pick up if you're looking at that one in 10 or one in 25. But if you just want to pre-order the new issues and you want to jump in on, say, Drac and New Dawn or any of these other great titles that we're talking about, Brian, there is a great store where they can go and get their pre-orders in before FOC and save some coin at the same time, isn't there? Yes, it's funny you should mention it. And we're, of course, talking about Black Cape Comics, which brings us to the Indie Showcase, which is presented by Black Cape Comics. So all the books we're talking about, on this show tonight, you can go to blackcapecomics.com and order those up, as well as this indie title that we are about to talk about that I think issue number one just came out this week, and it's already got people talking. We've been telling you about this title for, what, a year and a half now, but of course we're talking about Canto with Canto number two, Hollowman number two, hitting FOC this coming Monday night. That's right. We just talked in an interview with the creators of this series, David Boer and Drew Zucker, and I really think that this series is one of the sleepers of 2020. Now, you'll say, why a sleeper? This is a volume two. Well, issue number one introduced us to some new characters, and I think issue number two is going to build and expound on those characters, and we will get a better chance to see where those characters are going to go in the future of the newly dubbed Cantoverse. Yeah, so... This is something to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. Um, I think within this second volume, we may get more first appearances. I think certainly that's something to pay attention to. And again, it's, it's worth noting the shortage on issue number one, while there was a huge rush in orders to increase over the original uh, first volume, still a shortage. We're still seeing incentive sell above ratio. Um, and, you know, we're going to see a, a pretty solid size print run cut going from issue one to issue two. So make sure you pre-order, make sure you get those orders in. And if you don't have a place to do it, blackcapecomics.com is an amazing place to get those pre-orders in. Great customer service. The team over at Black Cape has really been leveling up and uh, communicating to their customer base about all of the changes as the uh, Black Cape Comics online business begins to explode. Yeah, so as Jack said, just this week we recorded another episode with David Boo and Drew Zucker, the creators of Canto. That video will drop on this channel this weekend. 
So if you are new here, please consider subscribing, click that bell notification so you get notified when that video hits the channel. But that wraps up the Indie Showcase presented by Black Cape Comics. But like we always do, we have that plethora of additional printings to discuss this week, right? Yes, and we're getting to the point now, Brian, where some of these late printings may actually be some of the highlights of this FOC list. Now, we've got a plethora specifically coming from Marvel, but we're going to begin outside of the Marvel Universe, and we start with Spawn 309 hits a second print. G.I. Joe number seven hits a second print. And then entering into the Marvel Universe, we've got Captain Marvel number 20 hitting a second print. Empire number five hitting a second print. Star Wars Bounty Hunters number two hitting a second print. Thor number two hitting a fifth print. Thor number five hitting a fourth print. Thor number six hitting a second print. Venom 25 hitting a fourth print. Venom 26 hitting a third print. Wolverine three hitting a second print. And Wolverine four hitting a second print. Yeah, it's going to get to a point where... <laughs> Th those early Thor issues are going to have as many printings as there are issues out, but hey, people are buying them up and they're loving them. So yeah, I got to grab all of those Venoms and all of those Thor late printings. I can't help it. Yeah. It's definitely created a, a niche in its own right for those books because you hear people talking about it. And you also hear people asking, hey, when's this additional printing, third print, fourth print or whatever issue comes out? That's why we put those in the show so that you guys can, <laughs> so that you guys know. I'm still on a little legend there, a little rhymey rhyme. <laughs> but, but there it is, guys. Also, like Jack said earlier, that Power Rangers Draken New Dawn Howler and exclusive goes up for sale this Saturday, August 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can get that on SimpleManscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. We will have links in the description of this video for you to check out. But with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Simpleman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.